Because somebody said maybe if you pulled that damn cap up, your ass wouldn't be so dark. So here, here's some forehead. Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another book tag. Uh, today, uh, first and foremost, I need to cross my P's and dot my Q's. Um, there's a... Uh, Alex of Hey Little Thrifter created this one since I got the last... Uh, <laughs> the last uh, tag creator wrong. Alex of Hey Little Thrifter created this one. Uh, she has a fantastic video up. I, uh, I will link down there in the doobly-doo. I suggest you go check it out. But Stephanie of That's What She Read, um, she tagged me this time. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Uh, today we are doing the Horror Booktube tag. So um, I'm going to get into this. I'm not exactly sure who all has been tagged so far. So And two of the people that I want to tag... One of them is Todd Librarian, and he's not um, around right now due to some family issues. And then you, you can watch his latest video in the I Need to Explain, I think is the title of it. And also JB. So I, I'm going to go ahead and right off the bat just tag these people. Uh, er, uh, sorry, I'm still getting used to it. Ryan's uh, Beautiful World, I think it is. Uh, I'm tagging Ryan. I'm tagging, let's see, your Cammy's already been tagged. I don't know who I'll tag. Uh, so if you want to do this tag, just go ahead and jump into it and, and, and just do it yourself. Um, I don't know who else to tag. Uh, I'm coming up blank right now. So maybe I'll put some people down there in the doobly-doo once I'm editing and I can look through the people who haven't done it yet. Um, also, I will tag people on Twitter, um, whether or not... Chad, Chad Lutsky, if, you, if you're watching this and you want to do it, man, I'd love to hear these answers from you. Okay, so number one, how and when did you get into horror? I think just about everybody... Uh, mention this. Most people said Goosebumps, but I was uh, the scary stories to tell in the Dark uh, Crew when the, I guess, Scholastic Book Fair came around every year. Uh, that's those, those are the books that I would get. I did eventually get into Goosebumps, but I always thought they were a little too safe for my liking. Even as a little kid, I liked, sto sto I liked stories in which people died, and nobody ever died in, um, in the Goosebumps books. So I went and got, um, when they became available to my age group, I was a Fear Street kid. I was never really a Goosebumps kid. So it was scary stories to tell in the dark. But even before that, um, way back when I was in, you know, kindergarten and first grade, I used to write or tell people my own horror stories. One of uh, the ones that I remember the most that my mom still tells to this day is, she was walking me to my first day of kindergarten. And we were walking by, there's this huge field on Lime Street, which is a street that connected uh, straight to my uh, my school. It wasn't that far away from um, my house. But we were walking, there's this huge open field, and there were two big piles of uh, of dirt. One, well, actually, one huge pile of dirt and one smaller pile of dirt. And I looked at, uh, I pointed to the dirt piles, and I said, Mom, you know what's in there? She said, no, what? I said, that's where they bury all the bodies. And she goes, really, what's in the smaller one? I said, that's where Dad's buried. Oh, I was t I was telling horror stories before I even read horror, uh, so that's that's my that, that that's my experience with my first uh, take on horror. Number two, what was the first horror book that you read? Like I said, scary stories to tell in the dark. That was the first one. If we're talking about adult horror, and I, I don't know, it has some horror elements, but Dolores Claiborne, um, I don't kind of cemented my love for the genre. But you also, uh, I, I can't remember when I started reading Richard Lehman and uh, Dean Koontz and all that stuff. I can't remember if that came before or after I read Dolores Claiborne. I think up until Dolores Claiborne, I only read Fear Street books because Mom wouldn't let me into her, the, the great book closet is what I call it. That's where she kept all the no-no books. All of her, Dean Koontz, John Saul, Stephen King, uh, James Herbert, uh, if I already said him, um... Let's see here. I'm trying to think. There was loads and loads of books in there um, that I came across, and most of them had amazing covers. She was never into, like, the 80s paperbacks. She only collected the hardcovers, so I didn't really get into the 80s, uh, 80s and 90s, the paperback stuff, until, like, leisure books. Um, and then when I finally got into... The, my, when I finally got my Leisure Books subscription, that's when I started going back and hunting like the Zebra um, publications. And uh, I, I don't know if it was, was it Kensington back then or was it just Zebra. I'm not sure. But I, I went back. I'm one of those retro guys. After I found you know the newer stuff, I went back to look for the older stuff. Number three, what horror-related goodness can we expect from your channel? Um, I'm not sure you're going to see a whole lot of horror-themed stuff on my channel, um, unless it's like Halloween or something like that. And specifically, uh, 
you know, I, I read a horror novel, that's, that's probably all you're going to get from me, really, other than maybe, if you want to consider him a horror author nowadays, um, Clive Barker, I, I guess he still is, I mean, the Scarlet Gospels is still technically horror, um, but he's more of a, I've always considered him more of a dark fantasy author, um, I've never really considered him a horror author, let me fight that fight down there in the doobly-doo, is Clive Barker a horror author, or is he a dark fantasy author, because some of my favorite stories are dark fantasy, like the, in the hills, the cities, something like that. Fantastic work of fiction, but I still consider it dark fantasy. Um, and then you, but then you still have uh, the one with Marilyn Monroe and all that. I can never Son of Celluloid, I think it's called. Um, fantastic stories like that that are definitely a hundred percent horror. Uh, do you have any favorite themes or sub subgenres within horror? Yes, my favorite theme in horror or subgenre, whatever you want to call it, is cold. I will read any horror novel, 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 <laughs> any horror novel ever written. As if it's if it's in a cold environment, I am there. Uh, Dan Simmons to Terror, uh, Ronald Malfi's Bone White, um, some Stephen uh, some Stephen King stuff has been set in very cold. Uh, the Shining, of course, I, I almost forgot that one. Um, there's just really, really terrific fiction. And for some odd reason, cold, I feel cold, uh, not odd reason, I, I, a lot of people feel this way or else there wouldn't be a subgenre um, with cold temperature horror fiction. Um, but it, there's something that lends itself, I guess it's the, uh, the survival aspect of a cold temperature, but on the exact, uh, the exact opposite end of the spectrum, I also like super hot climates. Um, so if you have like some that's kind of subtropical thing, um, so super hot climates because, uh, so what is it, Sun Blind by Michael McBride is a fantastic book. Um, if you guys haven't read it, you need to. So I guess anything with extreme weather, I'm there for. Uh, next up, name an underrated horror novel or author. Um, Chad Lutsky. I mean, everybody in this community that, that that everybody that watches the show has heard me talk about Chad Lutsky, but that I still, and everybody gives him, just about everybody gives him five stars, but I still don't think that the dude has a wide enough reach. I don't think he'll ever had, have a wide enough reach. Um, and But if we're talking straight horror, because I've said this before, I don't consider Chad Lutsky a horror author, um, but if we're going straight horror, I, I'm trying to think of someone that doesn't get enough credit and I'm coming up short. The only one, maybe, I think Hunter Shea, uh, I think, I've talked to several people, and Hunter Shea tends to get written off as just a cheesy horror author, uh, but some of his stories have a much deeper, deeper aspect to them, like, I'm looking over here at Creature, so maybe Hunter Shea, um, th those kinds of people, um, Tim Meyer is great, uh, da -da -da -da. Gregor Zane, he's not really horror, he's a uh, bizarro with horror aspects. Some of his stuff has no horror whatsoever, I don't think Taboo Gasm really had any horror to it. It's more like a sci-fi speculative fiction uh, bizarro type thing. But yeah, those are my choices, those are the hardest ones, because I don't know what, what people consider underrated. I watched Alex's video and Alex mentioned Bernard Taylor, but you see Bernard Taylor everywhere, so I'm not sure what constitutes underrated. Um, especially Sweetheart, Sweetheart. I, I, I've seen several lists with Sweetheart, Sweetheart on it that was like the top ten horror novels of all time, so I'm not sure what constitutes uh, underrated. Now, number six is easy for me. Uh, name an overrated horror novel or author, which... Uh, Stephanie, I'm, I'm sorry, the, the, the person who tagged me, this was one of her favorites. Paul Tremblay. I don't understand the draw. Um, I've said this multiple times. Um, I don't really want to harp on it, but A Head Full of Ghosts was just a reboot of The Exorcist, like note for note for note. Um, I don't even think that he did anything new other than the ending where he just leaves it open, and that's kind of his shtick. You know, he leaves his, his endings open. But I tried to read A Disappearance at Devil's Rock, and oh, the dialogue was atrocious. So I, I don't understand what, what people get out of Paul Tremblay. Um, if you love him, that's fine. Um, I, just, I just don't see. And um, let's see here. It, it's funny because Alex mentioned my number two novel of all time. No, my number three. Number three? I can't remember. Um, novel of all time as one of her most overrated picks. So her, she picked Nosferatu. Um, so it, it's funny how, how much we differ in this community, and that's one of the reasons why I love this community. Uh, number da, 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 seven, recommend three of your favorite horror novels. Um, 
this one, okay, The Girl Next Door by Jack Ketchum, Stephen King's It, and I want to say Kin. I think those three kind of, kind of cement my love for the genre. You have, uh, Kin is the aftermath of a slasher, uh, it's a slasher novel, slasher movie. It's the aftermath of that, which I adored. I think it is a modern classic. It, of course, I mean, I, it's my favorite book of all time. Um, and But then we come to Jack Ketchum's The Girl Next Door, which pretty much made me the author that I am today. Uh, to, to, well, I know I've been writing cosmic horror for the past seven years. I understand that. But I start, my roots are in can happen horror fiction, like The Girl Next Door, or Stephen King's, you know, The Body, that, that or The Voice in the Night, uh, Traveling Vampire Show isn't can happen fiction, but it's, it's close there until the end. Um, if I, I don't think I spoiled that, but anyways, um, so, the, I'm gonna go with those three, I'm sure there's tons more that I'm forgetting. I'm sure there's tons more that I'm forgetting, but those are the three that come to my mind right now, and when people ask me about my favorite horror novels, I seem to stick with those three with those three with those three books recommend a book for someone who is new to the horror genre I think any of King's first first three um, is what I go to Carrie Salem's Lot and The Shining um, maybe even maybe even Pet Cemetery. Um, I kind of tossed that one out there because nobody knows how long Pet Cemetery was sitting in a drawer before he actually published it. I think he said six years, but I, who, who knows. Um, if, if we're going something that's just strictly, you know, strictly horror, I would say anything, almost anything by Bentley Little because um, he has themes along with the horror. The writing is very accessible. I would say Richard Lehman, but but I kind of feel like Richard Lehman feels uh, felt. Sorry, he passed away in 2001 on Valentine's Day, no less. Um, how he felt about his fiction? He wrote crime fiction. He didn't really write horror fiction. So um, I, I I guess I'd pick probably Pet Cemetery for a literary uh, horror thing, and then I would go with probably Bentley Little, maybe. Um, Let's see here, what's a really, really good Bentley, like, like the store, or the house, or any, really any Bentley Little I would throw out there. Alright, nine, are there any book-to-film adaptations that you particularly loved or hated? Uh, loved would be It, um, and yeah, this is turning into like a Stephen King-themed, ep uh, not episode, but book tag, but, um, It, the, the, I guess, reboot, the reimagining of It, the 2017 version, I love that one. And I absolutely hate Kubrick's The Shining. Um, I don't think they've done The Shining right yet, but Kubrick's version especially annoys me to death. The The music he, he uses uh, is supposed to be discordant, it's supposed to be upsetting, but it upsets me in a bad way. Um, it gets it makes me feel like I'm chewing on tinfoil. The, the film is beautifully shot. I will give you that much. The acting is over the top. The soundtrack is utterly horrible for me. Um, I just can't stand it. I don't know what it is about my ears. I can't stand that, that type of music. And most movies with that type of music in it, I either have to mute, <laughs> which kind of, kind of defeats the purpose of some of these movies, um, I either have to mute or I have to turn off. Um, Argento, I think, is bad about that. Dario Argento, I think he's bad about that, too. Um, let's see here. Ten, how do you discover new or new-to-you horror books, booktube, um, and uh, bookstagram or Instagram for the book, the book community? Um, it's the same app. Uh, I had one person ask me, where do I find the bookstagram app? It's just book lovers on Instagram. Just search the tag, hashtag bookstagram, um, and, you know, in place, replace, well, you, you could figure it out. <laughs> treat you like you're stupid and you're not stupid but uh, books hashtag bookstagram on uh on instagram also uh put hashtag horror there and you should be able to find tons of stuff also twitter if you know the right people to follow um i suggest sadie uh mother horror i know her as sadie uh she goes by mother horror on twitter uh michael patrick hicks is another high fever books is another one to follow uh book happy on Instagram, especially, even though she does on Twitter also, uh, book.happy, her name's Emily. Uh, so many more, Hey Little Thrifter, uh, the, the, two, the two people who tagged me, Stephanie, that's what she read, 
That's what she read. I said it right. Um, and then Alex of Hey Little Thrifter, Cammy's Corner. There's so many great YouTubers, uh, bookstagrammers, all that stuff that you can follow. Um, I, that's where I find all of my stuff. I don't hang out on Goodreads anymore. I, I go over there and I check my messages and add books and delete books and do reviews and stuff like that, but I don't hang out there like I used to, man. I used to live on Goodreads. Um, way back in the day, you'd see 12 to, you know, uh, easily see a dozen posts from me over there. Now you might see one. Unless I'm reading something really bad and I want to share the experience with everyone, you know, like the recent Dean Koontz book. Alright, what was the last horror book that you bought? I actually took it in because I'm going to read it, but uh, The Luminous Ones? Is that the name of it? Um, it? By Caitlin Starling. I can't remember the title now. Is it The Luminous Ones? Anyways, um, it was in the book haul. Um, that's the most recent one that I bought, and once again, I got it off Twitter. Um, and it was showing up on Bookstagram also, so that's where I find my new stuff. I saw that cover, fell in love ran over to uh, Amazon. Actually, I read Tracy Reads is another great account to follow because she's the one whose review I read that made that really clinched, sealed the deal, made me run over to Amazon and buy it. And it was on sale for like seven or eight bucks for, you know, a full-length hardcover. That was really cool. Um, let's see here. But Tracy Reads, um, I think it's Tracy underscore Reads 79, I want to say. I hope that's correct. Um, I'm sure you can find her. She hangs out with the, the people that I talk. She's also Ladies of Horror Fiction. She's part of that amazing crew. Um, that's another thing that you can follow, Ladies of Horror Fiction. They, they're they doing great work in, in the genre and in the community. Um, so that's someone else. I think it's at L-O, L-O-H-F, Ladies of Horror, yeah, L-O, at, L, ugh at L-O-H-F on Twitter, and I believe it's the same thing on book, uh, on Instagram. Uh, next up, on uh, number 12, what horror book is at the top of your wish list? It's a, I'm not sure if it's horror or not, but I think it is, uh, I-T-Z-A, Tracy Reeves, once again, um, that's where I get a ton of my book reviews because we have the same likes and dislikes. Uh, we tried reading Watership Down and basically both of us wanted to quit around the same time. So I feel like she she vibes with me on that kind of thing. So um, that's another one that she has talked about that is in my Amazon cart and I'll probably be end up getting I, I have a book budget every month. Um, so uh, that's why I normally go to like library sale so I can stretch that book budget as far as possible. And then, um, so I have to wait for my rollover, which just happened, um, and I'm looking to get It's, uh, and I think that's the only one. I have some westerns on my list, uh, or some Hicklet fiction also on my, uh, my Amazon shopping cart, in my shopping cart right now. So, uh, and number 13, I kind of did as number one, which is tag some people. Um, I wanted to say JB, and I wanted to say Todd, uh, Ryan, of course you, uh, do it too, please. Uh, if, you, if you have the time, um, I'm, I'm trying to think of other people. I will tag more people down there in the doobly-doo, and I will also try to tag more people over on uh, on Twitter. Chad Lutsky, I'd love to hear you talk about this one. This is one of my favorite tags of all time. So I hope I did a good job. Let me know what you think down there in the doobly-doo. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another book tag video. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!